learn how to customize your WordPress website with PHP code in this video. This is Kevin from Codebox, and today we're going to go over how to create event custom post types and custom fields on your website using PHP code with Codebox. Now, whenever you're creating custom code for WordPress, one of the best places to find resources is developer.wordpress.org slash reference. This is where you'll find hooks, filters, actions, anything that you can customize with WordPress, you can find here. So as I mentioned before, we're going to be creating an events custom post type as well as some event custom fields and displaying them. Let's go ahead and look at some of the resources that we'll be using and referencing in our code. One of the first things we're going to be doing is registering a custom post type. So if we do register post, we'll see register post type right here. On this page, you'll find information about the function. So in this case, register post type, you can see that there is a one argument that requires the post type slug. So, you know, page, post, event, whatever it's going to be. And you'll be able to pass various arguments in an array format to further customize that post type. Uh, so. You'll also see there's a description here and then the parameters, which is what we just discussed up here. So the first one is post type and you can see uh, you can't exceed 20 characters. It tells you everything you need to use. It has the different arguments such as labels, description, whether or not this is visible publicly, how publicly it is visible, uh, whether or not it includes the REST API, which is where you'll be able to use the Gutenberg editor among other things. And then supports, which is where you can choose what kind of content that this post type supports, such as the title, the editor, comments. And one great spot to look is user contributed notes. Uh, when you go to this section, you can often find examples of that hook or function or whatever in WordPress being used. Sometimes you can just copy those directly. Other times you may need to modify them to meet your needs, but it gives you some examples and some ideas of how to use your function. So now let's go back to WP Codebox and we're going to create our new event CPT snippet. And we could type this all out. So for example, we could do a uh, function CBX create event post type and continue to create our code. Now when creating a function, it's often good to have a prefix. Uh, this prefix could be based on your company, based on your plugin, uh, whatever you're doing, a prefix is nice because if another developer has create event post type as a function, and then you also add it, you're going to create a fatal error in PHP because you're calling the same function twice and that's just not possible. So adding a prefix always helps. Another thing you can do is you can add in if the function doesn't exist, if I can type. We're going to go ahead and create this function and with this little if does is it says, Hey, this function already exists. So we're going to stop this. And then the last thing you can do is you can do object oriented programming, uh, which is where you can do something like namespace and we'll say, uh, sports club. And then we could do class events, CPT, and then we could add our function here, right? We could do public function, CBX, create event. Actually, we don't need to do that. Now we could do public function, create event post type. And what this is, is this is object oriented programming, which means now we have our code within a namespace. We have it with our class and then we have our function. It doesn't matter if we name this function the same as another plugin because it's within a class, it's within a namespace. It's what we call object oriented programming. And it makes it a lot easier for you to work with your code to use generic function names, but also not interfere with other people. As I mentioned before, uh, we could go through and create our labels and create our, you know, different arguments, but there's a lot of great tools out there already to automatically create your custom post type information. Uh, one such tool is generate WP. This allows you to do, you know, let's say a post type generator. Let's go general. We can add our function name CBX create event CPT. We can add a text domain. So in this case, uh, we're going to do sports club. 
our post type is going to be called event name. Uh, we can add a description here. Event post type. Singular name is event. We'll actually capitalize that. Plural name is event. And we're not going to do anything else like this. So we can update our code. And there we go. We can see all the different arguments that we can add to our page. Uh, we can also further customize this by using options. Uh, we can choose what to support. So if we want author, if we want a featured image, uh, we can update our code for that. And now we can copy this and paste it right into Codebox. So now let's save this and enable it. And now if we refresh the page, we should see our events custom post type, but for some reason it's not showing. Oh, it's labeled as post types, that's why. And that's because our menu name got saved as post types instead of event. So let's go back to labels and our menu name should be events. This should be event and we can go for and add more of this, but we're just going to do that for now. Copy this again. Now let's paste this in. Refresh our page and now we can see events. And with that, we can see the different events available to us. Uh, this shows that it supports categories and tags. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and go back to code box and then we're going to get rid of this taxonomies field. Now let's save this, go back to events. There we go. So we don't have tags and categories anymore. We're going to leave those for posts, uh, but we are going to create our own taxonomy called event categories. We can use generate WP again for that. But in this instance, let's go ahead and use WP Cody. And WP Cody is a great tool that's free for WP Codebox users. So let's go ahead and create a function now with WP Cody. So we're going to say create a custom taxonomy called event category with the plural name event categories and assign it to the event custom post type. The function should be prefixed with CBX and the namespace is sports club. Now let's generate this. And we can see it just created the function for us. So let's copy this now. Let's go back into WP code box, create a new snippet. And we're going to call this event category. We'll paste our code in, save it, and then enable it. And now let's go back to our events and we can see we have event categories available for us to use. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to create custom fields. And let's look at the different options we have available for us. So generate WP does have a meta box generator, but this is a premium feature. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to use WP Cody again. And this time we're going to say create custom fields for the event custom post type. The custom fields should be event date and event time the event date field should use the input type date and the event time field should use the input type time. Now I added these clarifications here because I want to make sure that when a user selects the date or selects the time in WordPress, it'll show a calendar or a time field. So let's go ahead and generate this and let's see how this does. So we'll see that we have a function that adds custom fields and it adds a meta box and it adds event details, which is exactly what we want. We only want one meta box. We don't need two. And then we go to ahead and start to register the fields. Uh, we have event date and event time. 
and we can see we have a date input type and a time input type. And then down here we have a save custom fields function, which does a lot of the sanitizing the text fields and verifying everything is correct to ensure that no malicious code is being added when we save this. So let's go ahead and copy this function. We're gonna go back into WordPress and into WP code box. And now we're gonna say event fields and let's paste our code in and save it. Last, let's enable it. And then let's go to our events page. So now if I open up the youth golf, we can see we have an event date and event time. And let's just make sure everything saves correctly. So we're gonna do uh, February 26th and let's just open up the time here and do, uh, let's do 11.30 AM. Let's save that and go back into our item. And we can see that the event details, the date and time are correct. So with that, we've now created our events, we've created our event categories, and we've created our custom fields. Now we need to display those custom fields. And one of the best ways to do this is to use a short code. So let's go back into WP code box. We're going to click this generate button here, and you can see there is a short code generator already available. So we're going to select that and we're going to label this event time. Now what this does is this creates the function for you but you still need to add the code. So we're gonna do CBX event time, CBX event time. We're going to do uh, field is equal to get post field. The first argument we need to pass is the field. So in this case, we are gonna pass event time. Oh, we're not gonna use autocomplete there. And then we need to pass the post ID. So we're gonna say, get the ID. And then we need to add the content. And since the default is display, we actually don't need to add that at all. We'll just do this. And then we'll say echo field. Let's save this. And now let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and rename this really quick event time shortcode. And now we're going to go to our page builder and open up the event template. Oh, we need to resave our permalinks. So let's go back into permalinks and let's save that. And a lot of times when you add a custom post type, uh, you may need to go ahead and just resave your permalinks and refresh them. Now with that done, let's go back to our template. Okay, and we can see we already have some short codes here from before. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And now we are going to add a short code element. And we're just going to type in event time. And put that in our start time section. Let's save that. And now let's exit to the front end. And it's not working. So let's go ahead and find out why. Let's go back to Codebox. And it's because we didn't enable it. So let's enable that now. Refresh the front end and there we go. So we can see the event start time. And now we just need to do the same for event date. So we're gonna clone this snippet. We're gonna label this event date. We're gonna change CBX event time to event date. And we're just gonna change time to date everywhere we see it. Now let's save this and enable it. We're gonna go into here and we're gonna add another short code. And this time we're gonna say event date. Let's refresh that. And with that, we already have everything set. We can see our event date, we can see our event time. And these are just a variety of tips and tricks that you can use to customize your WordPress website to meet your needs. This is Kevin from Codebox. Thank you for watching.